satirical newspaper of note, The Onion, that reads, uh, Chinese factory workers fear that robots may never take their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's kind of an old uh, sort of a Marxist saying, you know, that if the members of the capitalist class, meaning the owners of the means of production, had to mine coal, then they would quickly create robots to do that work for them, you know, if they were the ones being forced to do it. So um, I guess my question is sort of uh, along the lines of, you know, this kind of income inequality that we're talking about has been a trend that's been happening for some time. And even in the 60s and 70s, there were people advocating for zero work movements and why not automate the undesirable work and stuff. This is not a new idea, as you said. But it seems that there's sort of these social forces that are contesting that prevent that from actually happening. I mean, we could have a basic income right now, you know, without the need to automate everything, even in the first place. But why isn't that possible, you know? So I guess my question is kind of, do you think that a movement toward that kind of social radical change that you're talking about, will that be possible without some kind of uh, radical kind of social forces contesting, you know, like social... Social upheaval. Upheaval, basically. right. Yeah. And then a bonus question. Uh, what do you think the last human job will be? Um, well, you, I'll, I'll delay that second one. But uh, as to whether there'll be social upheaval, I mean, uh, there are good reasons to, to expect it. I, I, it. History seems to show that we're very good at taking on big problems unless there's a crisis. So, I mean, there are many examples you can point to where we just think logically and solve problems. Uh, that's not, that doesn't seem to be how it works. So I, I do have some concerns about some sort of a crisis. Uh, if there is hope, it's not so much in the idea that the plutocracy will start to worry about the miserable jobs that everyone is doing, but rather that they might come to realize that they need consumers out there. They need people who can buy the stuff that they're selling. Um, if they eventually come to understand that and realize that they need a market if they want to continue to have economic growth, then I think there's some hope that the elite, the people that really have the power, may begin to sort of move in the direction of doing something about this. That, that's one of the most hopeful things. I, on the other hand, you could make the same argument about climate change. You could say, you know, the, the plutocracy would also realize the dangers from climate change, would want to move aggressively to do something about that too, and obviously that hasn't really happened. So. Perhaps I'm being naive in suggesting that, but um, I do think there's certainly a, a very high risk that we're going to have some sort of a social and economic crisis before this really gets the attention and the solution that it deserves. Um, as to the last job, I don't know, maybe something in healthcare, maybe, maybe probably something that involves, you know, intimate relationship with, with people in a way that only a human being in theory can do, although you know, as you really think about what's happening with these technologies, um, and as you think far enough into the future, you know, think 30 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, it's really hard to think of any job that you can say with certainty would be safe. <laughs>